Hello once again, everyone. William Stewart, Nick Deshera here, ready for your Sunday night of action at the NDA Team Dart 2024 at the Westgate Resort and Casino. Here we go. We're kicking off our coverage with some style there. Kenny Doyle getting on the board there with a 160 as our first three darts of our evening session. That means, Will, we're going to have a good time on this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday of darting action. And I'll quickly go into a Monday, Monday, Monday here. <laughs> About a few minutes, it feels like. So of course, uh, Kane Doyle there, and let's pull up the specific match here so we can kind of see where we're at with everything. The elite singles, yeah, he's the top half of the bracket. So, yeah, this is going to be Michael Summerfield versus Kenny Doyle here. Kenny Doyle so far beating out Michael Munzfeld and Jains Kindfist. I'm getting pretty good at my German pronunciations. I feel like I'm starting to get that intuition, uh, intonition right. And then Michael there getting a good, decent run, getting a first round bye, and then playing Mike uh, to get into this third round matchup here. Or I guess technically round two because there's prelim preliminary round in this event. This is going to be that elite singles 501 we're looking at here. Yeah, it looks like we've uh, lost our board sound, sound yeah. for that one, so we'll get working on that and figure it out. But uh, we do apologize on that one. Uh, maybe they moved the board or something. Yeah, something might have happened while we were on our break there. Was, uh, we needed to take advantage of the time that we had to uh, try to refresh for the evening session here. Kitty Doyle, by the way, on 61, opponent on 411. Here's the 411. Kenny Doyle starting off strong once again following that Friday night form we saw. Getting it done there in two darts there. 45.55 points per dart. Hitting an 11 darter to get things going. And double and double out. An 11 darter, not an easy thing to do. 160 in plus a 180 in there. Some good stuff indeed for Doyle. 
Michael here going to want to try to pick it up just a little bit here. He did have to win a little bit to get to this point. And, of course, if you're in the Elite events, anybody can have a good chance of taking the trophy here because that means you made it to the Elite level. And that's saying something. Well, let's see if it's three or five here. I believe it's best of three, but I want to double check because they could have bumped it up for these elite masters levels. See, Kenny, they're not able to get in following Michael's lead there, so I said something along the lines of, all right, let's try it again. Wasting no time, though, Michael is going to get in. And I feel like this will help settle him just a little bit over here. See, Will over there looking as handsome as ever. Everyone say hi, Will Stewart. If you saw him on the camera there. If you didn't see him on the camera, it's because you were too focused on the darts. Yeah, it's going to be a best of three format that we're going to be looking at here. So similar to how we saw some of the other non-team um, non events play out in those formats. Kenny okay, does get in on those next set of darts. They're getting a 105 in. You can see Michael, he, he dips his dart real down low to the ground before bringing it to his shoulder and keeping the bottom of his elbow pointed towards the ground there. So Kenny, on the other hand here, he's going to just try to get right to business, pressing the advantage because he's effectively taking the throw here in the second leg. Currently up 1-0. But Kenny didn't find a big one there. In close pursuit. Michael getting a good one in there. How about that one? One, three, six. Everyone, we're happy to have you back with us. We're happy to be bringing you coverage. Let us know where you're tuning in from, where you're watching, and also on top of that, who you're cheering for. We're excited to be bringing the coverage side by side, dart by dart, and round by round. So Michael can try to be the first one out of finish here. That's a good placement on that barrel. Oh, but he kind of just kicks it up there. Not going to be able to leave an out. And so Kenny will not have the opportunity once again here to try to get on a breakaway. 225 needs to be brought down just the smidge in here. Yeah, he can bring it down a, a good chunk here. Might switch to the bull. Ooh, he's debating on it. He's not happy with those two darts. Did switch over to the 15s there to leave a 140. Nice, clean setup, but not as clean as he would have typically liked. And 153, so struggling to find any of the triple beds there from Eichel. Doyle can try to get it done here. Ooh. That was cool. That was ooh, a little. Hello. Oh, this might go. This definitely could go. This can go. Double 10. For oh. another Kenny Doyle big finish. What a checkout. A 140 from KD Kenny Doyle. Kenny, bring down the boogie, Doyle. Sunshine State Santa getting it done, and Michael Sommerfield going to have to go to the one-loss side of the bracket here. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump on over to this one as it's already in store. Let's go ahead and uh, get our board view going, and I am going to try to work on that board sound as we go. That means you guys are stuck with me. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. This is going to be a top 32 loser side match. Tim Guzik and Dietmar Corell. I hope I didn't butcher those. And oh, okay. Will's trying to fill me on the nickname for getting I'm partially deaf. I sorry, I couldn't hear you there, man. DK501. There we go. So, yeah, DK501 versus Tim Guzik in this one. You can see just hammering away here. Both players in, trying to get off to the races here. 
Ryan O'Hare saying, watching from uh, Kansas, three hours past my bedtime. Brizzle Adams saying, what's up, Nick and Will? Well, hello, hello. See a lot of people saying hello. So thank you guys all for tuning in once again. And thank you to all the people that have come up and said hi to Will or I. And either re reintroduce or introduce yourself or just start talking with us. It's super cool to have those conversations with each and every one. And you can see Tim there not going to be happy with how that dart went. Threw it before the turn was uh, turned over. And that's a forfeit of dart when that happens. And you can see the shoulder strike there from DK. So DK now going to try to see if he can capitalize and potentially set himself up for a break of throw. And when you talk about breaks of throws, it, it's not as significant when you have a loser's first format and a best of three in particular. But what is important about it is it just shows how well you're playing to be able to go from behind and be able to beat somebody there. Um, just knowing that you're against the darts, against the pressure. Yeah, this is a Phoenix board we're looking at. You can kind of see above the score line there, um, the big number. You can see bull 2550 to signify that, the double in, double out. A range off, I'm not sure what a range off means, but I'm sure it's more of a Phoenix-specific turn there. Not quite sure what that one means, so that's a good question, Chad. I'll have to figure out that one. Do you know that what one? What was that? Right, right about there, it says a range off. Do you know what that would mean? I'm oh, on the setup options. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah I'm not sure. Know. It might be a Phoenix-specific term, but unfortunately, uh, that's not a strong suit of my dart knowledge repertoire. Yeah, we some of us have, some of us have not used the Phoenix board or are familiar with that, just like some of these players have or are. So, and I did find the issue on that uh, board, so we should be good. Fun fact: It's probably my fault with volume. <laughs> yeah, some somehow I got on. Unhooked there? Unhooked, so. That's the problem, too, is like when we leave uh, the equipment unattended, when we take our little breaks there. Uh, well, we also have a lot of staff that are ru runners and stuff. Yeah. For trash cans, for water. For the hotel and for the event alike. Yeah, so they, they've been using uh, our back area as an access point. Corey answering the question there, uh, and Jason as well, saying it. So it doesn't tell you the out, so it doesn't coach. No coaching. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you can see the uh, Rackton boards have a coaching option. I assume Radical has something similar as well. So, yeah, it gives you this out options per se. Wants to find at least a trip to put some pressure on the 19. Not that triple, though. One, four, three. Not a pretty leave. 19 might go here. Should go. Double eight will be the look. And it does go. Good shot there for him. Yeah, Tim finding it there and playing pretty well overall in that matchup there. I'm not sure what the scoreline was going into this leg. I believe that's 1-1. One, one. Did not quite see that one. We'll tell by the diddle here, so yeah. it should be 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it's going to be 1-1 one, one there because we tuned in partially through that match. That's a good placement there for Tim. DK going to want to try to take advantage of that barrel. Oh, and just dropped low. I will say overall it looks like Tim's the more comfortable of two players. Obviously when you're on the early side of the loser's bracket, sometimes there's a reason for it, sometimes there isn't. Sometimes it's personal struggles and... Sometimes it's just plain old bad luck. So we'll see who shines here, knowing that it comes down to one game. And no end for Tim. Highlighting that double 16, but not able Take it with him. So opportunity for DK, and he's in. First start. I wonder if there's a little bit of nerves that kind of instantly made their presence out there. I stepped out there to kind of look at the board or whatever, and he looked at me, and he goes, hey. And he goes, uh, <laughs> kind of sat there, and then he looked at me, he goes, stream on? And I said, yep. And he goes, okay. <laughs> 
Sometimes that helps and sometimes that hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. and that's what I was thinking. Maybe it was just a, like, a, oh, okay, maybe the, 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 the stream's looking at me. Um, but I did have a chat with DK um, just a little bit okay. on, uh, I believe it was Thursday at the Magic Wear booth. So, yeah, big supporter of USA Darts. Appreciate that. And here he goes. Big shots. How about a big one? 180 for him. Yeah, completely punishing uh, Tim for not being able to get in there. What a huge shot that is. Magnificent shot even. Splendid shot. Still not in here for Tim. Yeah, just pure frustration settling in. And sometimes when one happens, you start thinking about it, you start wanting it more, and then it continues to get frustrating and frustrating and frustrating as you're just trying to find it and spend more time psyching yourself out than psyching yourself in. Yeah, Zach, he did do it again, throwing that dart before the turn switched over. And, and that's why it's always a good habit if you're going to be playing on uh, any soft tip board. Just wait till it's fully tr over before going into the player's box. If the turn's not fully transitioned over, I don't walk into the player's box because I don't like setting up my throw, putting my arm in position, and then realizing I can't throw the dart yet. All righty, folks. And if you want to check out the links to the brackets, we've put that in the chat for you. It's on CompuSport, so... Make sure you're doing that. And some people saying that uh, he threw just before the uh, throw, or before the ticker went over. And uh, if you hit a double, does or doesn't stick, it's not going to count on that aspect. So that is a bummer, but it's part of the beast. It is. Finally does get in there doing a little switch up after struggling on those 16s. And that's one of the other things, too. Don't be afraid to just switch around on your doubles there. And if you're struggling to hit it, you Playing to your left or right, play to your vertical misses, and then playing to the top or bottom horizontal, depending on how you feel like your darts are going. So now pressure is just going to continue to build for Tim until he gets a couple big rounds and hopes for a lot of favors from DK, and DK doesn't seem inclined to give him any favors here. Doesn't look like it. Oh. Would require basically perfection here from Tim to get back into the fray. You can tell he's kind of differing from the form we saw earlier he kind of psyched himself out a little bit I think it's hard when uh, you have an early loss and then you start picking it back up and all of a sudden it feels like it falls apart again on you and had to feel for him here but fortunately no time to feel sorrowful DK wants to go ahead and get this done and dusted trip 20 for double eight double eight for the match oh taking a quick second here to redress equipment Double eight. Not quite yet. Frank asking, what's your all's favorite double to go in and out on? Uh, to go in on any that I can hit. Uh, to go out any that I can hit. Uh, but usually I, I'm a 16 shooter there. I like the 16s breakdown. I don't usually follow those routes there. What about you, Will? Uh, double top, double 18 for me. This is my preferred route most of the time. I'll Double in, I'll go double 18. You got to build confidence. Start double bull on double in. Just kidding, don't do that. And getting it there, DK501 beating out Tim. And Tim, you can tell he's just kind of almost shocked at himself. He kind of had that big eyebrow raise. I'm just like, you know what? That's on me. He's going to try to just shake it off, walk it off, and know that there's still multiple days of darting action left. You still have three full days of darting action after today. That you do, that you do. Just checking here on the board. It looks like we will have a match coming up on board F1 as Brian Dennis warming up on F3. So more matches coming your way as we're going to quickly get through this bracket, I guarantee you. They're already into the top 24. Wow. They are cruising and bruising. As uh, I think it will be a quicker stream this evening, but with this morning's international challenge taking place and lasting a while, that's going to be okay. It'll yeah, be we were live for about seven and a half hours if you count when we first yeah. walked in the room, too. So we'll uh, get a quick one going here, and then uh, we should be probably getting out of here early this evening. I, I would imagine before one. 
Guaranteed. Oh, can you stop jinxing stuff? Let's I just know. knock on the table here. Stop it, Will. <laughs> well, we can only hope because Will needs a Donner Kebab and oh, bed. Oh, Donner Kebab. Let's do it. Donner Alrighty. Kebab, you heard the man. We'll be right back with some more darting action in just a moment's time. He's the greatest golfing force on the planet. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
All righty, so I believe we've got a uh, couple matches up here now. Looks like Brian is just getting underway on this board here. So we'll hop on over to our Radical board. Like I said, they're just getting started and underway. This is Brian Dennis versus Michael Summerfield, who we just saw mm -hmm. not too long ago. Benny Dersch and Michael Musefeld is going to get going on board F1 here in just a second. Yeah, and you heard that right. Benny Dersch, if you do not know who Benny, that is. Benny, Benny. Oh, my. Benny and the Jets. Somebody help me, please. Guys, I think Will's finally over me. He is definitely no Elton John. You have the just vocal. Just eccentric. I don't know. You have the vocal presence of a kindergarten choir class, buddy. That's generous to me for sure. I think honestly. <laughs> I think just a little bit. I think just a little bit. Here we go. So, Brian Dennis, rocking a beautiful USA darts hat. I'll tell you what, hey, looks great on him. He just got that bad boy. So, appreciate the support. Absolutely. Of course, My Michael Summerfield, we did see in that previous match there. Do get on the dartboard to start things off. Jeff, Jeff McMahon joining us in the chat. How's it going, buddy? Great to see you as always. So Summerfield kind of struggled a little bit in that last one to produce the results that he was looking for um, against Kenny Doyle. Um, that being said, Kenny Doyle also came out with some serious heat to get things going, and it seems like he's kind of settled into place. Brian Dennis kind of having say international. Um, kind of having some mental struggles with darts. You know, he, he's kind of almost talking as if he hasn't averaged a 5-0 plus consistently for a long time. Um, kind of working on his confidence at the moment, trying to get things dialed in. Well, the same can be said for F1 with Benny. I mean, uh, we had a nice little conversation for about five, ten minutes, and uh, just kind of talked about how d darts – is today and where where he is with the game and trying to get back into it and i just said it's just about how much effort you put into it mm -hmm. honestly um Two hundred here. Gonna try to set up as well as he can, knowing that Brian Dennis kind of sneaking from behind, getting that to one three six in the blink of an eye. And now the question is, how good is the setup gonna be? It might be very good. It will be very good. One hundred and eighty there for Michael Sommerfield. Feld. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say field. It's it's it, it's Phil. I am dyslexic, it, so I do okay. try. I do try. That okay. one, that one's a reading issue, not a pronunciation yeah. issue for sure. It is okay. Now one three six. All of a sudden, from being the first out setup, will now have to be the first out taken out if he wants to win this leg giver, Brian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Just look at these brackets. Going from the one bracket to a Masters and Elite. My word, does that speed things up? <laughs> this it is really going. Does. This is crazy. Zooming. Right, it's getting all the way down the four, but Michael will get the first shot here now at some doubles. Double ten. Outside. Same spot. And doesn't find it. All three darts practically hitting the same one hole out region. Brian Dennis, you set yourself up on two. Gonna hit it. Let's see. Double two. Boy. He didn't think he was going to get this opportunity, to be honest, and he's gotten it, so. Now we're going to the madhouse with it. Goes low. Oh, man. Going outside. But gets it on the third dart there. Good shot there from Michael Sommerfeld. Oops. Nope. And 
does look like uh, the first leg over on F1 was taken by Michael Mulesfeld. So wanted to mention that. I'm going to go ahead and set up our cameras for uh, board one. Got to get a little side peek and see how that one's developing as well. Both of these players not struggling to get in. The question is, if they're going to be off to the races, who's going to lead the way? Michael Sommerfeld playing significantly better in the, this uh, matchup here than he did against Kenny. And I know Kenny kind of threw the book at him a little bit here, but you can tell he's just a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more settled, and sometimes it just takes that extra match or two to really find your stride. Interesting conversation in the chat talking about uh, looking at the different board faces and how they affect different people with color blindness. I actually never really kind of considered yeah. that perspective and very interesting point there. So we're hearing some different, you know, some things about the blue board out there, the arachnid. Uh, some people think it's more soothing on the eyes. Ryan here needs to find something. He's kind of effectively lost his throw. So now Michael in control, gonna try to hit around a ton plus here. He's at least 116 to leave it out. <laughs> Trent Wagner saying, I don't know if anybody's ever really settled playing Kenny Doyle. Fair enough. Jeff saying, uh, Having a real issue with dart sticking, three of 15 have stuck. Well, I think part of the reason, and, and this was brought up good, is, is the different faces that you play. So if maybe you stick with one tip brand, it, it may be smart to try and experience some different tips this week, you know, with the different well, faces. It's different manufacturers making the pieces, that, and that's why that's important. Yeah, exactly. So uh, maybe if you're a fit, fit point person, maybe you try a set of L styles for certain boards and see how it goes. and. It's like, any, it's like a golfer going to a different course. He's got to kind of study the land and see how it goes and get the role, different roles in the landscape. You should do the same for different faces yeah. and darts. You're absolutely right. And, you, and you'll notice that they, even though they're a standardized size, the holes can vary in size just a little bit based off how they come out of the factory, right? Mm -hmm. So having that's why I, some players actually bring different color tips and say these are the ones I'm using for this board, this one I'm using for this, and that. Because uh, that can also help, because it's just wear and tear on the tips as well, switching between all the different kinds. Well, Summerfeld, back on 217. Yeah, went from out in front to behind there, and it's a couple axe turns. We were wanting to jump on over to F1 and check out some of Benny's leg, but unfortunately, that one goes to Michael Munsfeld and Benny will bid us adieu. But for this one, Brian Dennis needs 84 to go. Double 12. Gets it. 1-1 one, one score line here. Zen uh, from Team Germany. Or not Team Germany, from... Uh, one of those DSOP teams is in view there. Team Evolution, I believe. That is right. Sorry for missing that diddle there. Yeah, t was kind of agreeing with our conversation earlier, yeah. talking about switching uh, tips between matches. It's uh, something, you know, think about if you've never thought about that. If you only use one standard tip, try something new and... I mean, people always people always uh, um, sorry, those board sounds threw me for a loop there. No, they threw me for a loop too. I was also uh, like, whoa, what is happening here? People always, you know, dog Peter Wright, Simon Whitlock, all those guys for, for experimenting, but you should experiment. You should be trying to yeah. pick up an extra point or two. If you use just normal big flights, maybe you should experience with, with a shaped flight or, or, or a longer yeah. shaft, shorter shaft, tips, 
try well, it, try to experiment with that. I think I probably try. I tried to try not every dart barrel. Obviously, is impossible, but I try most of the different flight systems and tip systems as well. Like I just bought a set target K flexes. I have Condors at home. I've tried QSOL as well. I've tried all these different companies. And that's because I want to find what works best for me because it will be different depending on the player and their experience. Because even that extra point or two in averages can make a big difference at the end of an event. Yes, Jeff pointed out they changed his tips and they're all starting to stick again. You notice the players that know the most about that are going to be the ones where they have vendors that have different kinds of boards in the same area. Those are the ones that are most experienced with those types of situations. Big triple there. No guide to work off of on that first bone, but he says, I don't care. You almost wish that second one would have bounced out with the way that deflected. Right. That's the other thing, too. I don't mind bounce outs because it just lets me have a full open room, especially if I hit and bounce out. You see a lot of different people talking about their setups. Now, let us know your dart setup in the chat. We would love to hear what equipment you guys are all using. Nice and fun conversation on the side here. This from Dennis. Big 171 there for Brian Dennis. Massive 171 for him as he puts himself one step closer to the next round. As he is in the loser side, but it'll mean a guaranteed top 16 for him. In this field, that's saying something for the record. Saying a lot of something. And then some more something is what it's saying. Leonard Gates, Bob McCoy, a matchup on your winner's side. That should be a good one. How about old school Scott Miller taking on Jules Van Dongen. Ram Gravara taking on Jake Smith. And Sha Sasha Stein take, will take on Kenny Doyle. That's your winner's side matches as Brian gets the d job done. A dub for B-dubs. Getting it there. We're going to go ahead and uh, pop on over to our middle board, F2, is uh, we are underway, I believe this should be good here. Some more German on German matchups. Yeah, this is gonna be Dennis Huss and Kai uh, Gothart. Kai was a part of that, uh, he won for Team Germany yes, today. He did, hit the winning dart. Look at him go, big in for, for him. You can see there, uh, then it's just being like, all right, come on, let's get the changeover happy. It's one of those things where, again, I don't enter the player's area until that board's fully changed over. I don't want to be thinking about that. Yeah. I want to go with a nice, clean game state. Maybe that's because of my steel tip background there, but I like to approach the board to be able to throw when it's ready. That's my biggest problem is stepping up too soon because I'm used to being on the heels of the opponent mm -hmm. for steel tip. I like I, I like the, the turn and burn mentality. Absolutely. So, yeah. I always say me and Dustin Holt when we play together it just it lasts no time at all because we just get in this rhythm and it's choo 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 and we just turn and go. And I'll be honest, I love watching dart matches like that because it's just so engaging to see that nice, clean flow and momentum, you know? Yep. Well, not quite the check out for Dennis. As guy's going to snag that first look, I believe. So we had Michael and Michael. Now we had Brian Dennis and now Dennis Huss. So we're getting a lot of the same names. So keep up. And if you're having trouble keeping up, uh, that link in the chat from earlier there for the brackets. You can find all the brackets over on CompuSport. You'll be able to follow along with everything there. And we also do have a kind of a cool thing that we've started, a mailing list. If you want to sign up for our mailing list, uh, you can get entered into some nice raffles as well as uh, so much more. And all we really notify you is upcoming events. So get involved in our mailing list. There you go. There's a nice... Uh, link for you. 
Click it. Click it now. Well, once the match is over. Don't click it now. Click in a minute. But click it now. Double 12. We'll get it there. You see Kai's not, not too thrilled there. But 120, ton, 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 and check out. I mean, what can you do? Well, we're one to one here. Kai to show first. Found a single bull, but on the bottom side there, leaving Dennis plenty of room to work with. Unless he throws it like that, going a little high, and he kind of knows he kind of just didn't really power through that dart. I wonder if this match will either get DK or Matthias in their next round match for the top 16. In on the first start and off to the races there. Kai said, I'm done messing around. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Unfortunate fall in with that first start, but recovers with the second. Putting a lot of uh, a lot of big rounds in here, and even if they don't look big numerically speaking, they're big momentally speaking. Knowing the only forty point open there for Dennis, he'll need to find all three of these. Yeah, he's starting to trail a little bit, so that going first advantage plus the point lead at the moment. Interesting stuff here developing for this German on German action. So what will Dennis do at 361? Won't be able to leave an out from here, but he has to get himself in range to set up. You have to make sure what the, you're, I mean, this is do or die leg, so you have to make sure to keep yourself in it, even if you feel like you're out of it. True, 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 true. We'll see if Kai can muster this one down. Another one for double 12, yes sir. Not going to leave a finish here. So six darts for 24. Kai, for the match, is going to try to get it done right here, right now. Gets it. Puts the darts in the pocket. A little sigh of relief, and you can see Dennis giving a head nod. And then big hug for the players there. So good stuff from those guys. Yeah, good shots indeed. We're just going to take a gander here. Yep, still clear on board F1. Doesn't look like we quite have a match ready to go, but we will uh, get one here shortly. So hang tight, folks. We've got uh, Stefan Scheig and Brian Dennis, our top 16 match up next on board F1. So that's where we will head. Don't go anywhere, folks. William Stewart, Nick Deshera. This is going to be a quick one tonight. Mm -hmm. I hope you're ready. Blink and you miss it. Yeah, because we are definitely ready. <laughs> oh, absolutely, buddy. Uh, Stefan actually was a part of Team Germany last year, one of those dark shark teams, if, I'm, if I recall. So, yeah. All righty, we'll get underway here in just a minute, folks. Appreciate you. We'll be right back. Darts.
All righty, little to no downtime at all, and we're back and up and running. This is going to be Stefan Sheik uh, versus uh, Brian Dennis here for this one as we're getting the Brian treatment. Oh, yeah, it looked like it was set up open and master out by accident. So they're probably just going to back it up and, no, they, yeah, they need to set it to the right format there. And it does look like we will have a uh, winner's side matchup on board F3. So we want to do that one as well. As we will uh, try to get that match in after. It's more the Brian and Brian and Kenny show, I guess. So we're gonna see if we can kind of move around here we've got those guys pretty consistently we're not going to just catch them the whole way but uh we'll see if we can i mean i would have liked to get that lg matchup up here we don't see much of gates you see the lady there has her phone mounted to the chair live streaming it for the fans over on the other side of the world i would imagine i said you're live streaming live streaming she just smiled and gave me a thumbs up i'm like okay <laughs> Got fans back home that want to watch. Absolutely. It's pretty early, but it is Monday, so there may be some up, but up and about. Love that it's asking how you choose who you're streaming. We don't. <laughs> yeah, that that that's pretty much it. Is uh, <laughs> uh, the National Dart Association chooses those matches, and we jump in when we when we need to, or when we feel like eh, we really want to get this match or this match, but. The more we step in, the more clustery it gets. If we just let them have their flow and, you know. Yeah, just let them do their stuff. Yeah, they're pretty good. They know what to do. Um, and oh, so on and so forth. Well, then is here. 260. Let's see what he's able to do with this. Going to look for uh, about 100 here. Anything more is extra credit. I do laugh at uh, Kenny. He said, uh, don't put me over there anymore. He's been up here every single match, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's also the match is playing so fast that they that's, know that's to prioritize it. this area. Yeah, too. they're just prioritizing matches and sending them out. Whatever is ready. And that's it, too. I mean, it, it, with this also not being just like a weekend event, but with being, you know, six plus days of action here and even longer than that for us. We know that most people get a good opportunity, especially in the elite levels, to get represented. So it just comes how the cards fall. That's really what we fo follow. And then this gets to 132, only hitting 45. 167 could go. Not yet. So he's going to try to see it up here. Now let's see how Brian approaches one through two. He's self-proclaimed as uh, not a math guy. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ever see him do steel tip, he only will do it if my dad's the chalker, because he will help him out. <laughs> Starting at the 20s there. Now deciding where he wants to go from here. And you can see the indecision, right? He tried to go for a trip 20 on that last start there, but that would have left 14, not really an ideal double. It's not like that's a Brian preference in particular. Double 16 for leg number one. Getting it there, Stefan. One nil advantage for him. Brian is sort of lake number two here. It is that mugs away in this best of three. You can see he just goes for that double 16 and then the nice and easy 19 transition there. Beautiful in for Brian Dennis, finding a 146 and leg number two. Coming out swinging.
Can't find a triple, so advantage for Brian here. Although that can quickly change depending on uh, what happens. A decent marker. He chooses to go down after that uh, second dart, that second stray. Tries to hit the cover shot on the 19s, gets away a little bit. So, Brian, this is where he struggled in the last leg, was kind of hanging in there or leading the way, and then kind of fell short on some of the setup rounds. He's going to need to try to continue to follow the same momentum he's been casting for himself. Just looking for any big triple there. 166, it's fine because it might be a bogey, but again, keeping that scoring in front and knowing that Stefan cannot leave it out from 368, perfectly okay position to be in. Brian just will take this down as he can go to a reasonable checkout. 20 or 12. I like the 12 here. He likes the 20. Yeah, nothing wrong with the preference there. You'll see different doubles for different people there, but 32. Nice setup there. And he likes to go in on double 16, so he might as well go out on double 16. Getting it there, one to one score line, going into a tiebreaker here. Yeah, you can see these games are not lasting long at all. Ten, ten minutes, and and on to the next one. I mean, we haven't mentioned yet, but have we talked about how much uh, money's on the line here for first place? Uh, we have not. We have not mentioned really much money at all this week. Honestly, yeah, we haven't. But this is a big one. The elite event here, $2,500 first place price. Wow. Right? That's pretty big, that's actually. A, that's a nice paycheck there. $2,500 going to our first place winner. Yeah, to try to incentivize um, some uh, growth and also try to help out all these players in the upper levels. Uh, that little carry on the stick there of having some added money on top. Give it a nice prize for these guys to fight for. See Gary having some fun with the hashtags there. Definitely having some fun with the <laughs> hashtags. <laughs> oh, Brian composing. Oh, getting the double bowl, using the barrel to his advantage. What a beautiful dart. That's a big deal, but it only matters if he can capitalize with a big start to follow. So, Brian, one, four, six, and last time. If you do something like that again, he's going to be feeling pretty good. Oh, not quite as good, but hey, he hey, got in. It, it gets in, gives him somewhere to start, adds a little pressure to Stefan. Gets him to second. And what a, what a last dart. Big dart. Just put some distance out in front. That's Try to counteract that start from Brian. Exactly, and the alarm bells aren't going off for Brian yet. He's going to just try to attack it here. Oh, and he's finding those 19s. He's kind of switching down there and staying downstairs. How about a 171 from Brian Dennis? He said, all right, you're going to go ahead and hit a bigger end than me? Well, then I'm going to have to raise my game up even more. Oh, catching left and right there on the wrong trips. Not going to be happy with it. Right, the board, Kenny Doyle has 84 remaining. 
I'm not sure if they had a leg before this or not. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would have. And Kenny's getting the uh, second position there, and he does get that leg. Now you mentioned Kenny. Kenny and Brian both throwing very similar dart setups with the speed flights there. Uh, and both having a lot of preferences. Now, Brian will throw a one on the bottom of the border while Kenny will not, but you'll see those 19s and 17s. It's something with those top shots in Florida. They really like using the bottom of the board to their advantage. That was just the first leg. So break a throw from Kenny Doyle on that first leg. I wanted to mention that as we did say we would jump on over. Oh, my. Another one? He's really pounding those 19s. He said, you know what, 20s are not working right. Let's just go ahead and go somewhere else. And sometimes you just got to do that. I mean, it helps reset. If, if, if you're not comfortable or not quite collecting where you think you should be on the 20s, make that switch and see if you're collecting on the 19s. Maybe even the 18s from time to time make that switch. But you're giving up some, some points if you do that. You are, you are doing that. Automatic 18 if you hit all the triples. 162, 180, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. This could go 19s for sure. No, I was thinking, why Why wouldn't you go 19s? Yeah, you would think just because of the momentum and flaw. I, I wondered if you were just thinking, all right, well, if I hit a single well, there, then it could stay on for the double eight. Uh, four 19s leaves tops. That's what my mentality would be. No, you're absolutely right. I, but, like, to reiterate, Brian's not a math guy. He <laughs> will say that. <laughs> but, hey, nonetheless, he's still on tops with uh, Stefan back at 171, not able to go out here. Oh, but he's going to get it all the way down. He will. So the pressure is mounting for Brian, but he's going to get the first look, and he's got three for the win and to advance into the ninth through 12th position. To go to double ten now. On the wire, you thought it was in. He has to readjust. Needs to go for this and play it hard. Oh goes my goodness! And Brian Dennis may be out of this event. Wow. And gets it there. Stefan, getting it done there. Brian Dennis is going to have to be kicking himself just a little bit on how the doubling went there, but also good on Stefan because he earned that position there. We'll head on over to uh, Kenny. And uh, is it Sasha? Sasha's matchup here? I would believe it's so. Yep, Sasha Stein. There it is. And Kenny, unfortunately, back in this leg. So this should be square for a decider. Um, on the winner side, it looks like Ram Gravara did best Jake Smith. So the winner of this match will play Ram. And Jules Van Nongen, Scott Miller is undecided. Bob McCoy did lose out to Leonard Gates. Glad to hear Gates is feeling better. I do know uh, he was having some pains earlier. And he was, but $2,500 on the line. I think you could, I'd wheelchair myself out here if I needed to, to yeah, make absolutely. that one happen. Oh, looks like they did tie it up here. Kenny now to show. Oh, getting in double, it looks like. Yeah, he's double checking there. Let's see if he's able to take advantage of where that barrel's positioned. No, it looks like it did go a little bit high on it. So Kenny Doyle will get the start in this tie-breaking leg. Kenny has been on a little bit of a tear this week. So far, he's going to want to continue his run here. He says, come on. Come on. Joe likes to start up at the double top. Good correction on that second dart. First one was well off his margins. And then find the third dart there in the trip 20.
Heiko, good morning. Good morning. Oh, got to get in. And he does not. Kenny's just going to continue on the attack. Starts off right. And gets a big hit. That's a great recovery. Yeah, exactly. You basically needed perfection to kind of get back into the mix, and that's exactly what he delivered. You even see Kitty, I think he said good job there to him. Kind of adds a little bit of pressure to Kenny to keep the keep the momentum mounting. Yeah, I don't know if um, Kenny's necessarily feeling the pressure, but it's definitely making more conscientious of his position and otherwise in a scenario where he would relax. And he'll tell you he would rather have someone kind of up on him pushing him with some good darts because when he gets ahead, he will admit that he can lose focus very easily. He's very much uh, one of those uh, neurodivergent ADHD players. <laughs> so uh, having someone tail right behind actually keeps him engaged. He prefers the close dog fights. Put himself in position for a checkout here. 115 remaining. Even if Sasha can hit a nice 140, he's still behind. Yeah, Sasha's only goal is really leaving out. You have to give yourself at least a chance if the 115 doesn't go. Of course, Kenny Doyle on this finishing has been incredible. And Sasha won't do that. So six from 115 for Kenny to advance. We've seen, what, five 10-plus finishes at least from Kenny Doyle at this point in the week? How about another? 15 for tops. Kenny mm. Doyle, everybody. He is just playing well. And that is almost an understatement. Well, he is playing damn good. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go, folks. More action coming up next. We're going to keep it rolling quickly. We're already into the top 12 of our matchups. And Jules Van Dongen. Loses out to Scotty Miller. So Scotty Miller will play Leonard Gates on the winner's side. When Kenny Doyle will play uh, Ram Gravara. $2,500 for first. Who's going to take the top prize, folks? Hang in there and see. William Stewart and Nick DeShare will be right back with more coverage soon. And just like that, more action coming your way. Jake Smith and uh, Jen uh, Nest, Neist, Neist, I think it's Neist, of Germany underway here in their ninth through 12th matchup. There's a big hit from Jen to capitalize on the misses from Jake Smith. She's 
Jim will step in at 329. This is clearly in his favor to take the leg. As he hammers in a big one. Yeah, some very solid darts and really punishing Jake Smith here for not finding the darts he really wants. And he's one, he's one of those players where right now he feels like he hasn't been playing to the best of his ability uh, in the last couple weeks here. And he's really wanting to prove, hey, I still have that going on. I can bring you my best stuff. He wants to show it. But right now, Jens is kind of dictating this narrative in his favor. He really is. And trip 14 to leave 32. Really good stuff here as he sets in a 13 dart leg. And you can see the uneasy tension there on Jake's face. He knows he's got quite the task ahead of him. This is just back to back to back to back action we're getting right Absolutely. now. This is Absolutely. great. Absolutely. They said we're going to catch up this uh, tonight. We're going to get uh, get done and dusted. Great shot from Jens as he takes the first leg. So let's see what Jake Smith has in store for us here to get things going. Oh, well off the margins for him. He is, yeah, nowhere near where he needs to be right now. And see, with the vertical misses like that, I would prefer if he started going for some of the left or right doubles. But there, does find it on the last start. At least he is in, and that's going to make him feel a little bit better. But he knows he's still got the task to... Finish this up, and Jen is right behind him. Well, Jen's. So he doesn't like the position. He had to go for the cover here. Does correct on the last to keep things neck and neck in leg number two. Good recovery for Jake. Oops. Wrong button. Apologies, folks. I blame Nick Teixeira. Tried to grab that other board cam, or that other player cam. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake, a 2-2-1 two, two, here. Let's see how well he sets himself up here, because it's not a question of if. One more trip here. Does leave himself 86. How about some of the support system back there? A lot of South Dakota and support. Ray and Hunter and Madison. You can see Gabe Megan, Steffen. Megan Watson and uh, Mason over there as well. So some Florida people hanging out yep. too. Yep. And what a time to hit another 180 for Jens. Adds the pressure to Jake's throw. Now two 18s or a triple will suffice to leave himself a double. You want that triple. Who wouldn't? Oh, but not oh, that single. No. Needs to go trip 15 now. And he can't even do that. Oh, no. Jake. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself. Yeah, especially if Jens hits this for the win. 88 needed. Trip 20. Two darts at it. Double 14. Gets it there and punishes that from Jake Smith. And Jake, you can tell, is a little upset with himself in his performance, but still gives that moment to show the respect to the opponent there, which is yeah. important sportsmanship. Unfortunately, just didn't uh, show up for that uh, first leg, but it is what it is. Here we go, folks. Jules Van Dongen will take on uh, Michael M Musfeld. Musfeld. Musfeld here in this one.
Fun fact is uh, Jules does speak German, so he does. Uh, a little bit easier for him to translate with some of these guys and talk with them. Michael's going to get the start here. Let's see how he performs. Going at those 19s there, and then the quick switches around the board to other doubles. I like that. And don't be afraid to switch off if you don't like the angle of your dart. Getting double 15 on the last dart. Oh, Jules getting in with these, though. Let's see if he's able to continue mounting some pressure. And <laughs> you can see the eyebrow raise. That dart kind of got away from him a little bit. Throws in a low ton. A one, two, three. Count it up, as I say. Good cover shot from Jules. Another one of those? Not quite. So, advantage right now for Michael. Still a pretty close one so far. What a oh. throw. Michael keeping this interesting big 180 for him. Yeah, this was just so nonchalant the yeah. way he threw that 180. That was the most impressive part of it all. He seemed to inspire Jules here to almost do the same going high on that last dart there. Self 85 with Jules on the outside looking in. Yeah, Jules is going to try to tee up here. You never know. Missed doubles could absolutely happen, and that's what he's going to be trying to play for here. He needs to try to leave himself a good out. He needs to try to leave himself an out. Does do so. Getting down to 1 2 6, so not a bad setup. 85 will be the shot, though, for Michael on leg number one. Getting it there done in two. Oh my goodness. What a playing particularly well at the moment. Yeah, what a leg that was there for Michael. Nice 35. And now Jules do or die position yeah, here. He knows he's got a hammer away here. Michael is just playing like it's effortless. And look at him go. Yeah, he's getting fired up with it. I think he was also a little upset with that dart going to five because he thought it was going in the yep. 20. Yep. I feel like that's kind of motivating Jules here. He's kind of making him, forcing Jules to throw some of his best stuff, finding 180 there of his own. Indeed it is. And big shots. There's your opening for Van Doggen. Good stuff from Jules as he continues the onslaught in the second leg here. He said, all right, you're going to push me to play. Let me see what I have in here and really kicking it into fifth gear. And he sits at that one, three, two. Michael. Only hope was to fill it up there. And how about that? Going that double double. Uh, All right. I mean, it's, it's more prevalent, more pro uh, popular now. I figured he may utilize the bull there, but he didn't. And the reason why is because Michael's on a 186, so. Exactly. So now, 
three darts for 12 points here. Jules wants us to go to a last sight decider. Getting it there on the second dart. And we're going to be going into the diddle now. Jules to show first. Looks like taking a peek at the Masters bracket here. Already getting into top 24 matches there. So they're moving pretty fast too, and that's a bigger bracket. Trying to get in here. Gets in on the last start. Jules in in one. What can you do with the other two? Great last start there. Pushing himself out in front. Gaining some ground here and I do want to mention because they actually started at five. I'm surprised by that. Ladies Master Singles started at five. Congrats to Stephanie uh, Zhang and Bianca Michael Check, who uh, Stephanie won your first place title. <laughs> Top three are Germany and yeah. uh, Masters Ladies. Then that shows right with the international challenge. I mean, that was a 3 0 sweep in the finals against Team USA. Some of the most formidable ladies in all of Soft of Darts. Yes, it was. So big congratulations to Stephanie. There were 17 players in that bracket. And yeah, it did start at five. I thought they'd push that back, but unfortunately, did not. So. I wasted no time there. I see you listening in the background there. I see. Gentlemen watching, <laughs> listening, give us a little wave. That's Jeff. <laughs> My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. <laughs> oh, Stay that's some there. good yeah. darts right there. I'll well, tell you what. Leaves a checkout opportunity, and Jules kind of shrugs off, knowing that he's got to collect now. Has to find a trip. Oh. Doesn't. This is a big opening now for Michael. This could be the door opener for the win. Oh, it's on. It's on. Double 14. Almost got the 148, but not quite yet. Jules, the Dutch Dragon. Van Doggen back against the wall. says, oh, found it. <laughs> oh, that's where that was. Right where I left it. It's not going to be enough as Michael's going to get four or three darts at uh, double 14. Gets it done there. Michael and Jules exchanging a handshake there, and you can see Michael will continue on with his run in this bracket here. Excited to wow. see how this continues to develop. Same here, same here. We're gonna take a look, a gander at our board F2. Nobody there, so hang tight, folks. We're gonna take a uh, quick peek at the bracket. Refresh if we can. And then, uh, I'm sure we'll be getting these winter side matchups coming our way here shortly. Kenny Doyle versus Ram Gravera, or Gravara, and then uh, Scotty Miller versus Leonard Gates. That should be a good one, and then, uh, include our coverage here. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go anywhere. William Stewart, Nick DeShera. More action coming up next.
here we go back in the action here top four winner side on the elite event for this kenny doyle and ram guevara going to be duking it out on the dartboard here and what should be a very interesting affair to see who moves on kenny has been fighting along on our stream we have to catch him a couple different times there, hitting some 10 plus outs beating up michael Jans, michael again but different one and then of course sasha as well and now ram on the other end of things fighting along beating up uh skay dennis benny and jake to get to this point here so some good matches and you can see the diddle was going almost the full distance there both these players don't want to give an edge to the other knowing that this is going to be a tough hard fought battle that we're about to witness here i'm nick Shred joined by will stewart for this one yeah it should be a great matchup winner will play either leonard gates or scott miller who's on board number six down the way so we should have some non-stop action the rest of the way we did have a little halt in the bracket there but it's caught up and we should be good to go okay, he does get in on that last dart there not a big end by any means so you can see Ram can immediately start attacking the throw if he finds this in with ease. Gets on the second. Can he add a couple more points? Does do so. So slight advantage early on for Ram. Or Ram. Ram. Wow. Hello. Ram. Hi. Ram. 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 <laughs> That's his new nickname. Ram. Ram. If you don't think he's going to know that later, he is definitely going to know it because I'm going to tell him about it. So. Yeah, he don't know nothing about nothing. That's not true. I like Ram a lot. Yeah, solid dude. Solid guy. Really, he's really funny, too. Yeah. <laughs> Especially once he has a few drankity dranks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get him going. He's a good time. Well, he's having a good time right now. Or was having a good time, I guess. Finds the triple 20, but can't quite find that last dart. This could be a door opener for Kenny. Yeah. Kenny's going to try to make it one. Put his foot in there. Grab the handle. And he almost yanked it open, but just slightly made the door ajar. See a lot of you guys in. Uh, uh, <laughs> we see a lot of you guys in the chat here. Excited to have you guys watching along and hanging out with us, giving us some insightful uh Comments, questions, and fun time conversations with you guys in here. go ram gonna attack try to make himself put some pressure on the kenny throw but 80 is going to be what's left for doyle i think he's going to be pretty clean uh keen on having this go on here trip 20 double 10 it's almost automatic for kenny his outs have been incredible. You remember at the beginning of Friday when we were like, man, Kenny's struggling on his doubles. And he started hitting double bowls for his outs, and then all of a sudden, every double started looking easy for Doyle. Do you want to know how to get involved with NDA? <laughs> no. Don't do it. No, no, no. If you guys do want to get involved with this event, ndadarts.com, N-D-A-D-R-D-A-R-T-S. Wow. Wow, this, the fatigue is real. He well, can't. He can't spell, ladies and gentlemen. He yeah. doesn't even know his own name at this point. I, I'm Nick DeRossier. That is good. That is good. Well, Kenny, not able to get in off the rip and advantage Ram. Kenny already had the advantage, but even more of an advantage. That's advantage squared. Finally, some sensible comments are starting to go on in the chat. Danny Bagger saying, Nick for president. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
That guy's upset because I haven't reached back out to him yet. That's he's just he's just pouting. He's just pouting. I've never failed to answer Danny Baggish message. Fun fact. Because I don't get them. I'm going to be honest. I haven't answered any messages. And people have been reaching out to me left and right. So I apologize. But uh, <laughs> it's, it ain't a week to do it, I guess. <laughs> it ain't a week to do it. I got some... some uh, some backtracking to do when I get back to the house. Oh boy, we're getting in the weeds here. Ram finding 140 there, putting himself well in front to kind of make him have a significant advantage to potentially make this one to one here. And there's Kenny, big 180. Get him back in the mix essentially. Closes the gap and gets him back to almost chalk, but that means that he hasn't really taken that going first advantage away from Ram. Ram continues to hammer down. Good switch up dart there was going trip 10 to leave double 18. It is interesting, right, when we were so used to commenting on some, some of these um, freeze rule games and realizing that people are just going to go for actual ideal setups now rather than sometimes some of these heavy point scoring <laughs> setups that we have been seeing so far. Uh, going to more traditional setup routes. <laughs> of course, Danny. <laughs> of course you do. Uh, double top. Double 10. He doesn't want to give Kenny the look, and he's going to. He dragged it way in there, and Kenny wants to punish this, get this two straight. What a steal this would be. Right. The king seat match. Kenny Doyle, 20 tops. Oh, over to the double 10. Doyle does it again. ka -ching. Cash is in. You can see Ram give himself a head shake. He's a little disappointed with himself on that ending double there, but quick to show respect to Kenny, and Kenny the same back there. Looks like we got some more action. The real McCoy. There's also Brandon Perez over there as well. We got a, a lot of good dark players over here. As we will diddle it up for the decider, and Bob McCoy is not happy with that one. Yeah, this is going to be a top eight matchup to move into that top six here. So this is the point of the back where they've made the money. Now they're going to try to continue to make more money with each win. will start us off. Musfelt really wants to get a good uh, start to this campaign because we saw when he gets rolling, he can yeah. really start hitting it. He played well against Jules. He's looking to do the same here. How about that? Great opener. Instant pressure added to Bob McCoy's throw. And this is a top eight matchup, folks. So winner will advance into the fifth, sixth position. $100 difference. Oh, McCoy's going to answer. Oh, unlucky on the, that dart there. You can see he kind of looked and thought that was definitely in and might be an unlucky deflection there. Looks like Perez might have just been out Gary there on board F3. I believe that's a Masters match that they had going on over there. Shots. Continues to pad the pressure. We are neck and neck. Michael working his way in, finds the trip, and hits a single on the last. So he kind of waves it off, but hey, 160 is a leave, so that means he will be the first one to look at it now here. The real McCoy, a.k.a. Bob McCoy, going to have to make sure he hits a ton here, if not more. He's going to try to go for more. 
He will get more. How much more? Oh, catching left side there, but down to a one, two, five. Good stuff there from McCoy. Danny, I don't believe either of those players are still in it, but, uh, the elite event here. So, oh, got this go. Oh my. One, two, five. Went bull first, a trip 20 for tops. For the win. For Michael to advance. And he will advance the real McCoy, Bob McCoy, getting defeated there. And Michael getting some more big wins under his belt here. What do you say? I mean, he's definitely proven that he can hang with the best of them and beat the best of them even. So good stuff there. Good stuff indeed as this bracket continues to develop into some very, very exciting matches. And I believe, yeah, your King C match will have Leonard Gates and Kenny Doyle. They are waiting on a board assignment at the moment here. You can see they have some good matches coming our way. It does look like we have Scuba Steve up on board F4. So we'll flash that over. You can see that nice bright blue board. Boy, is that different seeing that, that one on the stream, isn't it? But here we go, folks. We'll keep it right here for right now. We'll keep an eye on our streaming setup, and we'll jump on back over when we have a match here for you to view. It's your coverage of the NDA Team Dart 2024 live here from the Westgate Resort and Casino. We'll be right back with Singles 01 action to conclude our coverage. I would try to put this board on, but it looks like we don't have that overhead to give us a crisper view of the score line. So a little tough to give you this one, but 28 remaining for Holt, it looks like. He should collect on this. Not happy with that setup and has to kind of essentially walk away. Holt gets the job done over Patrick Longyang in that Masters bracket. That's where he is at. But it uh, looks like uh, Scott Miller is awaiting Jens, who will play either Kai or Sasha. That match was played on F6, so that should be over. So we should have that match coming your way here for you, and then... We should have the winner's side matchup as well, which still has not been called. So bear with us. We'll get these matches your way here in just a moment's time. William Stewart, Nick Deshera, be back in a moment.
Breaking soft tip news, Windmill has announced a string of American player signings, including PDC superstar Jules Van Dongen. You've known about Leonard Gates, of course. However, we also saw Mike Maloney, Rick Henze, and Garrett Rakowski, who are prominent soft tip players. Not to say they've never won anything on the steel tip side, but they are renowned for their soft tip accomplishments and dominance in the U.S. And for you folks overseas unfamiliar with these guys, just go on over to our YouTube page, at USA Darts, type in their names in the search bar. We have dozens of great matches featuring all five of the new Windmouse sponsored players. You will not be disappointed. It is astonishing to see three sponsorships that are soft tip leaning by a major darts brand with over 50 years of experience in the industry, not to mention the Blade 6 being the board sponsor for the PDC. So if that doesn't answer the question, why do people play soft tip? I don't know what else can. We totally understand how the UK folks might not get it and just don't realize how popular soft tip is globally, but trust us, we at USA Darts Production literally make half of our living streaming soft tip events and the other half streaming steel tip. You don't have to like or respect the soft tip side, but at least be aware. Soft tip is obviously beloved by enough people who truly enjoy participating. And now players are getting signed by Windmow. I can't wait to see what's next. It's the greatest golfing force on the planet. Bullseye! Oh! We got one! It should be landed! We know he's too good. The world number one! World champion! Incredible stuff! Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
Breaking soft tip news, Windmill has announced a string of American player signings, including PDC superstar Jules Van Dongen. You've known about Leonard Gates, of course. However, we also saw Mike Maloney, Rick Henze, and Garrett Rakowski, who are prominent soft tip players. Not to say they've never won anything on the steel tip side, but they are renowned for their soft tip accomplishments and dominance in the US. And for you folks overseas unfamiliar with these guys, just go on over to our YouTube page, at USA Darts, type in their names in the search bar. We have dozens of great matches featuring all five of the new Windmouth sponsored players. You will not be disappointed. It is astonishing to see three sponsorships that are soft tip leaning by a major darts brand with over 50 years of experience in the industry. Not to mention the Blade 6 being the board sponsor for the PDC. So if that doesn't answer the question, why do people play soft tip? I don't know what else can. We totally understand how the UK folks might not get it and just don't realize how popular soft tip is globally, but trust us, we at USA Darts Production literally make half of our living streaming soft tip events and the other half streaming steel tip. You don't have to like or respect the soft tip side, but at least be aware. Soft tip is obviously beloved by enough people who truly enjoy participating. And now players are getting soft signed by Windmow. I can't wait to see what's next. Alrighty, here we go. Will Stewart, Nick Nashera, back. Not better than ever. We're tired as heck, but we're still we're still surviving here. This is going to be Michael uh, Musefeld, who we've seen play well these last few rounds against some great opponents, taking on Ram Gravera or Gravara in this one. And this is your fifth six on the elite side. We do have some Masters matches that have been snuck snuck on over here. Good open from Ram. Ram's going to just try to follow in suit with his previous go here. Trying to get ton, ton plus on the board. Keep up with Michael. Michael just, what he does particularly well is he'll just randomly, when he hits his good turn, it's just like blinking, you miss it fast, and it just will completely change the momentum on his timing that he's been finding. I mean, when he played against Bob McCoy, just finding that big shot to put the pressure on at the right time, same thing with JVD.
Neither player on an out, so Ram was let off a little bit from that poor visit. Will want to leave an out from here. He can. He might. He will. Good shot. Leave the 136 off of 180. And Michael back on 190. He does not have a look here. All I can do is whittle this down to hopefully a checkout op. Good correction, Ram. There he wasn't happy with those first two. Finding something else to fix it up there, but 95 will be the look for Michael on this first leg. Good look, it might be. Good shots. Given those opportunities, he has not really missed many doubles. You've seen like some big momentum swings with some of the hits, some of the misses. Oh, look at this from Ram. Finding perfection on that end. Michael does get in. Ram with the advantage. Trying to make this 1-1. One, one. Good stuff there from Michael. Good correction on that dart there. So now Ram, one for two. Ram just going over to the 16 hour. I would have probably preferred to see a trip 10 there for a little bit of a cleaner setup, but I think he was just trying to leave something there. It doesn't really matter at 257. That's also why I would have probably preferred the trip 10. But neither here nor there. Michael just going to try to get back in line, leave himself an out, and hope for an error from Ram. Ram does not seem like he's in the mood to give any errors. He seems in the mood to give successes. Doesn't leave an out though, so Ram off six from 50. Finds a 10, up to double top to make it 1 1 and go to a last leg decider here in this top six matchup to see who moves to the fourth place. And the money keeps doubling and doubling and getting bigger and bigger as these matches continue. So you know these players want to get that big chunk of change. Michael can take advantage of that lax diddle. I don't think he did there. It might be the same. Yeah, I don't I don't think it did. Kind of an awkward angle on that dart. Looks like Ram will get the throw here. Er, no, Michael. Michael got the throw. They're both sitting back there. But it looks like Michael did get the throw here. So 1-1, one, one, last leg decider here. Gets in on one. 
Oh, a little frustration there. You kind of saw the little hand shimmy doing almost already got to a Mr. Roboto over there. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Are you surprised at this point? No, I'm no. nothing surprises me anymore, Nick. Good shots there. 180 for Michael. He just continues to lay in some good numbers. So now Ram's going to have to hit a big one from behind to make sure he falls in suit. One more trip here. What did you find, though? Yeah, 140 there. Losing a little bit of ground, but going against the darts here. Falling against a really good throw. I think he's doing just fine so far. Michael's going to try to set up. Now Ram gonna take advantage of that weak turn from Michael. It's gonna take advantage. Doesn't get quite a 180, but does get down to a 146, so we'll have the first look in and out. Michael's gonna have to press that and make sure he leaves himself an even better out to put pressure on it. Four, six. Does it have to go? You almost think it does. I think so. Trip 18. Oh, my. Trip 20. I need to flex over. I almost kind of wish with how well he threw that first that they might have just stayed on the 20 to get the guaranteed dart the dub. Michael, 78. We'll get two darts now. Double six. Gets it done there, and another big win for Michael Musfeld. He just continues to put on a display here in the early stages. Now we do have another matchup going on. This one's from the master side of things, so we'll go ahead and post this up real quick. Evan Sutterman taking on Brandon Perez here. So this will be a master's level match. Yep, just said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what I knew you were looking. So here we go, top 12 that we're looking at. Yeah, so a decent position here, honestly. Absolutely. Winner will play either Austin Braswell or John Edwards. How about a 180 there from Brandon Perez? Rocking that Team USA jersey. Of course, Team USA, Team Canada, representatives here in this match. And that's, a, that's the thing is you're thinking, well, why aren't these guys in Elite? There's such a minute difference in the Master and the Elite yeah, singles area. They're pr yeah. practically the same, if you ask me. So I, I do like the split this year rather than the one bracket. That can be a brutal bracket. It can run very long, and one match having some problems or some complications could potentially make your night hours longer by the end of it. It can be a cascading effect you see sometimes. Jed asking, what is the average difference between the lead masters? I don't know exactly what that distinction cutoff was. Do you yeah, know? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you 100%. I know that they released that information, but I did not see. Let's just team this up. Perez to win the match. Evan kind of has that look of Yep, I know it's coming. 
Double top. Gets it done there, and you can hear some loud celebrations from the crowd from some of the Brandon Perez's supporters there. Love to see it. Having given a handshake there and some respect as Perez will continue to fight along here and continue to try to play tough. And you can see that was his partner, Patrick, that he was playing with the other day. Just going to take a gander. Nothing on our uh, board three. So we should have some more matches coming your way here in just a second, folks. As we look to crown a $2,500 champion. That's a pretty good payday. Elite singles, yeah, and they got to pay the streaming fee too, so $100 at least out of that to us. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. And what are you going to get? Because uh, that's for me, right? That's my cut? Uh, that's my cut. Yeah. Oh. You get a dollar. All right, here we go, folks. <laughs> we'll be right back with more in just a moment. Don't go anywhere.
Alrighty, we did wrangle in. We were waiting on somebody, I guess, so hopefully we got that figured out. As they are called on board F3. So it'll be Kai, Scott Hard, and Scott Miller for your fifth, sixth place match. Winner will play Michael Musefeld in the fourth place match. And we should have Kenny Doyle and Leonard Gates that will be called up here any time. So there's a little update for you. We'll keep it on player two. And they'll be up in just a moment as we'll have that match for you.
All righty, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Another matchup. Fifth, sixth position, Kai Gotthard versus Scotty Miller. Yeah, what should be a good match here. Fifth, sixth to move into that top four to play Ram, or sorry, excuse me, uh, the p person that beat Ram Guevara, Michael Musfeld, in that fourth place match. And you can see that money just increases in the bracket every single win here. I'm excited to see what we have in store for us, what's going to be going on. Randy, I didn't lose a bet. I chose to have my hair like this. I'll have you now. Check if this held up our master side at all or not. I would assume not, but yeah. it could have held up our master side. Nope, they're still getting underway, so good stuff. Okay. Yeah, they're keeping things flowing pretty good overall. Despite that slight little lull there, things have been going pretty good. And look at Scotty go. Classic Scotty Miller, folks. Yeah, really, I mean, it went from seeing a rare sighting to a starting to become more and more common sighting to see Scotty Miller back out in the mix, and he's showing, hey, I still got it, and then some. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Of course, Kai is going to not mess around with uh, doing some pretty good work on his own right here. Getting himself out in front by 20 points. But Scotty effectively trying to take the throw away from him on a turn like this. from Kai. He's finding it, his groove now. Big 180 there. Yeah, to find that 1-4-1 one, one leave, putting pressure on Scotty now to have to set up as well. Gonna need a ton plus. Needs two trips. I won't be able to leave him out because of that miss in my bad math. A little bit of a Two front war there. <laughs> one four one will be the look. Trip twenty, trip nineteen, double twelve for Kai. Just like that. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. The only dart that stuck was the last, but what a shot there from him. Just like that, one nil advantage for Kai after a uh, great leg. I'm ready to sing. He heard you. He already knew that math. <laughs> I feel like any dart player, especially in high level, should know one four one off the top of their hearts just because of the nine darter, right? I feel like. Do you, you have to. Do you? How many different ways can you go for a one for one? You, there's a plenty of different ways, but there's one way that everyone likes to Name see. Name two. Really? Name two. Really? Really? You're trip thinking about it. Trip You're 20, about trip it. 19, double 12. <laughs> okay, what's the other way? Uh, trip 17, trip 20, double 15. You really just gave a double 15? It is another way, isn't it? That's what you asked. You didn't ask for a smart way to do it. And you left 20. You, you are so... <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> if you're going to go trip 17, you go trip 18, double 18, bud. What are you talking about? But my favorite is the trip 20, trip 15, double 18. That is one of the fun ways to shoot it there. The old it's, school. It's also cool to see all these different, like, routes and different preferences. It kind of gives it a little extra flavor to the person's game, you know? And plus, you can say all you want. I'm still going to beat you in our show match. <laughs> but you haven't beat me yet. You're not going to now. It's because I'm trying to gas you up before I get it on camera. Sure. All righty, here we <laughs> go. Scott Miller, kind of in the back seat driver here. 
As Kai is playing really well. He's at that right level. Stroking it. Yeah, Miller there just getting 140. Kind of give him the head shake because he knew he needed a 180 to leave the 160. You kind of, when you know you're shaking your head over 140s, the opponent must be doing something right. Guy's doing a lot right, <laughs> let's be honest. So I'll have at least three darts at 101. Scotty's going to put pressure on it here. He set up a potential 11 dart leg. And granted, it'll probably be a, <laughs> a 12, but still. And Scotty's <laughs> right in the mix, dude. Right in the mix. Kind of pulled that last one there a little bit. But after that 141 went, he's got to feel this is going to go. The big opening there of, that we haven't really seen from Kai so far. Yeah, he will try and go 45, 36 there. And successful, so at least Scott with the opportunity to take this out. Trip 18. Oh, stayed on it. I wonder if he just wanted to ride that barrel and try to get the guaranteed double in. But it would have been the ideal 90 for trip 18, double 18. Eighteen double top for Kai to one two straight here. Scotty's already clapping. He thinks it's over. Yeah, yeah well, well winning double his, still has to his, help. He's put his darts down. I think he fully thinks this is done. Yeah. Only well, Kai's been playing though. I I assume the same as well. And it is the case, Scotty, giving a round of applause alongside with the rest of the audience there, and some high five for Kai. You know what? You know what that's considered. A good old-fashioned butt whooping, and that, <laughs> that's what that was. Let's be honest. Kai played really, really good there. What? Great shot. Uh, great shots. I'm going to have to presume we're, they're about to call that king seat match, and since the fourth place match will also be taking place here. So I imagine we're going to get king seat third final. That's probably how that's going to shape up. Yep. Because there's only two well, matches possible on the elite side, at least on the elite side of things, I should Kai, say. Kai shouldn't go far. Fourth place match up next. He should hang tight and... Uh, Make this one happen. We'll be right back, folks, with uh, out any time to spare. Your king seat and fourth place match is coming up next here in the elite division. We'll be right back.
Gates giving a good laugh there, you can see. <laughs> Folks, William Stewart, Nick Tashir here. It is your king seat matchup. Leonard Gates taking on Kenny Doyle in this one, and both have been playing well. I'm excited to see who comes out on top in this one and guarantees a chance at $2,500. There we go. It has kind of been interesting. Kenny's been opening up this week and just kind of enjoying himself. And I think the $2,500 kind of got him a little excited. Oh, absolutely. What an opener from Leonard Gates. About as good as it can get. Yeah, throwing some great stuff there. Kenny just, what is set him apart is, again, we talked about at the beginning of Friday, we were like, man, his doubles are a little bit more off than normal. I don't know if the darting spirit possessed them, but ever since then, he's been hitting more ton-plus checkouts than probably any other player we've seen on the stream. Michael Ross says it best. It ought to be a slobber knocker. Kate's playing good right now. See, Kenny kind of mouth to himself there. He said, come on. Trying to get himself a little amped up. He knows he needs to leave a finish here. Well, he, he did say, I'm going to have to tighten this up a little bit. I don't know how Leonard's playing, but probably good. If they're at this <laughs> point in the bracket, he, he would have to imagine, right? Yep. You make it to this point in the bracket, you got to be doing something right. A little bit of an opening there. One, two, one's definitely not where he wanted to get it to. So, kind of hand the opportunity back to Kenny to try to put some pressure on this by getting a good setup here. How will Kenny Doyle handle this though, and what will he do to put some pressure on the throw of Gates? One more trip twenty at least. Yeah, I mean one twenty the Shanghai is not a bad leave, obviously, but you kind of wanted to make Gates feel like he had to hit the one, two, one, and maybe try to play a little bit of that mental aspect of it all. And again, Gate says, watch this. Double 14. How about that from LG? 1-2-1 one, one finish there for Leonard Gates on leg number one and a break of throw against Kenny Doyle. Good stuff there from Leonard. Kenny Doyle to start leg number two here, and he's going to have to try to start a little bit stronger here, knowing that if Gates throws like that, He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. McKinney, of course, playing at that high gear as well. Oh, good stuff from, from LG. From Gator. Gator don't play. That was a good round from Kenny. Starts us off with an op uh, a low ton. Oh, and there you go. That That's going to be the opener there. And kind of the inverse of what we just saw in the previous leg. Kenny knows he has to press here. Going to look for at least 100 minimum. Try to expand that gap and force some perfection out of Gates. Oh. Yeah, not around to do this. And oh. that is somewhat of a door opener here. It is a, absolutely a door opener at this level. 
if you're not shooting at least, you know, 60, 80 points around at minimum, you feel like it was a waste of darts almost. And Gates would want to wanted a little bit more from that. 81 is a good turn, but not enough to take full advantage here. Oh, that's a good mark for Kenny. Oh, he kind of just overthrew that dart there and not nearly as tight as he was earlier. You can see the eye roll as he knows and it's a little bit of fatigue showing. Update on our master side, it looks like Brandon Press did end up beating Austin Braswell and is now going to be going up against Dustin Holt there in the top six. And we got Brett Hollanday and Garrett Rakowski on your other side of the top six. Oh, who's this guy? Mm. Who's this guy? Mm, that's Garrett Rakowski's friend. Is this Steve Hilger in the top two? Fighting for the hill? Hilger on the hill? Versus Almost. Nick West. There's your final six. Porky can't believe it. He's sitting right next to us going, saying, what? That's for the hill? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm old. I can't do that. <laughs> Both these players definitely cooling off from their standard of the last one. Back to back to back to back openers, it feels like, for each guy here. It's about who capitalizes on it first. So pretty much, folks, we're going to end pretty identical on times here. Last start there from Kenny. Really want to find at least one more trip, but down to the one three six. So in his range, and I say that because we've seen him hit a one two four, a one two one. We've seen him hit a one six seven. We've seen him hit a one three six already as well. So Kenny Doyle absolutely in his wheelhouse of outs. But how many times can he rely on these big must hit checkouts? We're gonna find out because Gates put the pressure by asking the question after hitting a one eighty there. That's a big turn, leaving fifty seven and putting the pressure on this one three six. We've seen him hit it once. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, and he pulls it inside. He pulls it inside. He knows that he was not happy with that dart. That would have been his second streamed 136 of the weekend. Instead, it's going to go to Gates. For 57. Two dart checkout. Not yet. Okay, yet. Yeah, Kenny kind of sensed that one was coming. Leonard Gates, your king seat holder here. Two straight there, and Kenny Doyle going to be kicking himself because he felt like he gave some opportunities there, but he's still absolutely in the fray of it all. Well, I think we will jump over to... Uh, you think we will? I think you two. will. We'll wait on uh, that leg to happen there, or that round to happen. And this is your fourth place match. That is correct. The winner of this will play, Kenny Doyle. Good last start there from Michael. So now Kai. See how he gets into this. Randy, have a good night. We appreciate all your kind words. Trying to give our uh, best job of keeping up with the comments, but a lot of moving parts as always. So anybody that comments in there, just know we do always try to go back and read every single one, and we appreciate all the kind words that you guys send to us. Thank you so much for tuning in and giving us your love, support, and time. It looks like uh, this is the first leg. I'm pretty sure I don't see anything written down on that paper so yeah, I would believe you're right here I was thinking the same thing one seventy it's gonna take a look good first start and second bullseye Oh, and he gets it there. Our Another 170. Our second 170 Whoa. of the week. Oh, my goodness. What a fantastic shot that was. Michael Munsfeld continues 
to put in dominant performances here. And to anybody that questioned his uh, match earlier against Jules, well, he's gone on to do it time and time again against other great players and some big shots. He's absolutely proving his worth right now. He's really firing on all cylinders, all things considered here. Oh, but Kai finding in a 180. See the German contingent of this event hanging out and watching. Jen for both. Always a support system there for the Germans, it seems. Almost makes me want to take a trip over to Germany with me and 50 of my best friends. <laughs> sit, sit around and uh, play in some tournaments out there. Oh, and that's another opener right there. Kai kind of saying, all right. Not going to be happy with that. Not going to be on a finish. 3 2 weights going to try to set up or at least get back within striking range. Good morning to those waking up in Germany. Should be around 8 o'clock. Good Local morning. Time. Yeah, 1 8 4 is going to try to get teed up here. Going to keep bringing it down. All the way down. Beautiful darts there to follow up. That was a great high ton. Almost effortless darts from Kai. That's just kind of how his uh, dart throw is at the board, it, it right? It seems like it. Both of these guys are just like, eh, nonchalant. -de 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 -de. I'm going to throw in a nine mark. -de 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 -de. Here's a 12, uh, 12 uh, dart leg. It's annoying how good <laughs> these guys are, honestly. Yeah, that's what it is. Double eight to make it 1-1. One, one. There you go. These guys, and let me tell you, with the sand that they're playing, these legs go by so fast. Yes. Yeah, that is that is the truth. And honestly, if we could just kick it in gear, these guys should be done with this tournament here in no time at all. If they could only just stomp it to breaks. Good diddle there for Michael. Kai, I roll there, but... Honestly, a good attempt. I don't think there's much to be mad about there. But he just knows how important it is if Michael produces like he did in the first leg. And Kai wasn't out of the first leg. He was actually, at, I believe, 124 when the 170 was hit. So, obviously, plans to have looks on every single leg here. Let's see how this goes. Michael composing. Oh, no. Does get in on the last dart there. But Kai wants to attack. Go in first dart. That would be massive, and he does. And usually it follows with another big round. It's a low ton to open him up. Shanghai. And you almost feel like the throw's already been relinquished, and now you're kind of fighting against the throw here if you're Michael. Yeah, now the throw has definitely been relinquished. Yeah, 140. So Michael's going to try to find about 140 at least to try to keep his score in line. But he's playing from behind. And back in front he goes, finding a 180 there. Big shots, and you can hear the crowd roar. At roar least we can. Well, they're roaring. Oh, Kai's not going to be happy with that last one not going into the trip. 156 is in his wheelhouse, of course, but tough shot nonetheless. 
And that means that Michael now can set up to 11 and put a lot of pressure on it. If he can whittle this down to a two dart check. Oh, no. no. Yeah, needs to be careful on this last dart. Switches to trip 18 smartly. That is a great, great switch because it would leave the 170, which he's hit already in this match. So one, five, six. It's on. Oh my, another big checkout. Double 18. And it's done, a 170 and a 156. How about them outs? Wow. Yeah, some hugs and respect. And it took a, everything out of Kai to finally knock down Michael here as he's really been playing so good and thoroughly impressing everyone involved. What a fantastic battle that was between those two guys. Folks, that was an entertaining match. That was. Really great stuff. 156, a 170 checkout. What more can you ask for? What more can you ask for? Well, now we're going to get that third place match of Kai versus Kenny. Yep, and hopefully we don't have uh, much time to waste. We'll get this one going fairly quickly as... Uh, I'm sure Kenny is definitely raring for bed. I know Leonard is as well. I think a we, lot of people are. We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, folks. Hang tight. More action, including your finals coming up next. He's the greatest golfing force on the planet. Let me tell you about A to Z darts. We're a specialty dart store with over 10,000 different products. We create in-depth videos and blogs to help improve your game and showcase our products. We give helpful advice on how to practice darts, the fundamentals of form and mechanics, and how to make better decisions when purchasing your darting equipment. Whether you're brand new or a seasoned player, we try to provide fun and informative content. I'm Jen, the creative director for A to Z Darts. I've been playing for over 10 years and I've traveled the world competing in and promoting the sport. This is Will. He runs our live streaming company, USA Darts, and travels the globe as well to broadcast major darting events and interview PDC players alike. You'll find over 2,000 different sets of darts on our website. Guessing right now you're pretty interested in our resources? Learn about form, throwing mechanics, practice routines, scoring and grouping, checkout methods, cricket strategy, and much more. Visit a-zdarts.com to take advantage of our blog or follow us on social media at azdarts today.
Breaking soft tip news, Windmill has announced a string of American player signings, including PDC superstar Jules Van Dongen. You've known about Leonard Gates, of course. However, we also saw Mike Maloney, Rick Henze, and Garrett Rakowski, who are prominent soft tip players. Not to say they've never won anything on the steel tip side, but they are renowned for their soft tip accomplishments and dominance in the U.S. And for you folks overseas unfamiliar with these guys, just go on over to our YouTube page, at USA Darts, type in their names in the search bar. We have dozens of great matches featuring all five of the new Windmouse sponsored players. You will not be disappointed. It is astonishing to see three sponsorships that are soft tip leaning by a major darts brand with over 50 years of experience in the industry. Not to mention the Blade 6 being the board sponsor for the PDC. So if that doesn't answer the question, why do people play soft tip? I don't know what else can. We totally understand how the UK folks might not get it and just don't realize how popular soft tip is globally, but trust us, we at USA Darts Production literally make half of our living streaming soft tip events and the other half streaming steel tip. You don't have to like or respect the soft tip side, but at least be aware. Soft tip is obviously beloved by enough people who truly enjoy participating. And now players are getting signed by Windmow. I can't wait to see what's next. Welcome back here. It's our third place matchup. Kenny Doyle versus Kai, Kai Got, Gotten Hard. Got Hard. There we go. I tell you what. That's Got Hard. I, I can't. Got Hard. Got Hard. There we go. I can't. I can't get that pronunciation right. Anyway, been playing well the last few matches, and he's going to be a dominant force here. Kenny's going to have to pull out some good stuff. We'll see if he can get the. Uh, Who's going to get the win here? Yeah, talking with Kenny out there. I went up there, and he's like, listen, man, I am so exhausted. Like he was telling you, yeah. right? He's like, I didn't think to get this far. I didn't expect it. And he keeps doing stuff like that. I'm like, well, if you keep hitting everything, it doesn't matter. He keeps saying you're tired. It's working, Kenny. It's yeah, working. He had a little spring of life, he said, when he thought that 136 would go. But landed just inside wire, and no relief. Winner of this one will face Leonard Gates in your finals, who played really well. Yeah, he did. Uh, and to be fair, though, Gates and Kenny in that second leg started off with some yeah. slow moments. But in that first leg, Kenny, or Kenny, Leonard played really, really great, as he said. And well, Kenny, he's Kenny. over there playing and warming up right now. Kenny brought up a good point. He says, this level, you know, I'll, I'll take Leonard with the four, with the round four, I mean, uh, four round out. You, you, you can sneak by on some of those going second, yeah. but uh, he says if if I let him go second and get to round five, then I'm not doing it right. Right. And with this type of a field to be at this point in the bracket, you're already going to be happy regardless of what's going on. I mean, right now these guys are guaranteed. If you like, you lose, you're guaranteed 500 bucks, and that's about 20 minutes in the casino for Kenny at least. Tie for the one, two, six. Will not go, so we'll go back over to Kenny for the one sixteen. I think I think I fancy this here. It's hard not to, right? Knowing Kenny Doyle. I think I fancy this here. I think he might too. Double top for the one sixteen checkout and leg number one, Kenny Doyle. 
Does not get it. Hugging the wire there one hole short and a well-thrown dart. Oh, my. Kai. Kitty thought that was in, no doubt. Kai not going to waste any time. He's going to be happy that he got that shot right there. So getting the first leg on the board here. Kai got it. God, no, no, you God, got me. God heart. God heart. As somebody put it no. in the chat and said, God heart. Yeah, uh, now I'm saying Goddard, Kansas in my head. That's what's throwing me off there. Now that's what I'm thinking. You're welcome. Yeah, you're that's welcome. what's <laughs> living in my brain now. <laughs> Let's go back over to Kenny. Kenny on the previous go did open 160 in. See the German support in the chat. An early Monday morning there for them. Welcome for those that are joining us. We appreciate you. Thanks for choosing to tag along for the ride. Absolutely. It really does mean a lot to us. Uh, we bring it up a lot of times, and it will always mean a lot. Because it means a lot to us. A lot, a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, my. The fatigue is real, guys. The fatigue is real. I'm already barely intelligible when I have rest. Great shots. But Kenny has this subtle advantage here. Going first. Just needs to continue to hit those triples. There's one. Another to get to a checkout. Yes, sir. Big 180. What a time to hit it. So Kai at 307. <laughs> We're getting some laughs from the German crowd about the Santa reference. Yep, we call him <laughs> Sunshine State Santa here. From Florida, the Sunshine State, and, of course, Kenny Doyle. The Santa. Oh, double 12. Not quite going to go yet, but doesn't need to. Kai yeah. back at 270, kind of having a lax leg here. Awesome, Braz. Well, we do appreciate you logging on like three different devices to comment <laughs> that on every platform. He's a real one. Leaves the 130, the little fish, just in case, but double six Is that to tie us up. It's called the little fish. You really didn't know I that? really don't think I've ever actually heard that. Oh, my gosh, Nick. What are, you're a dart commentator? I'm asking. I'm learning. Oh, buddy. Oh, my. Folks, that goes down as a Facebook post, I think. That's not a Facebook post. That's 100% That's a Facebook Last post. Last time I'm open and honest with you, Will Stewart. You were just open and honest with f nearly 500 people that are probably shaking their head thinking, you don't know what you're talking about, young man. He's only 25. We'll give him a break. I feel like I'm really just getting brutalized that over is, here. I'm just surprised you didn't know that. You just say, oh, yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> that's all I asked. That's I all am, I needed I'm, there. I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> well, here we go. Guy to get the start here. <laughs> one to one score line. Oh, no. Gets in with that last. At least gets in. See Kai, he's looking down like can't do that. Oh, oh wow, wow! Unbelievable from Doyle. As Kai looks to wrangle in a big number. Does playing so incredibly well. He's playing so good. Kenny knows he's pretty much got to go 160 here. Oh. Might not even get in. The fatigue might have finally caught up. He does get in there, but already down 140 points and about to be even more. Yeah. I I think that is finally the real fatigue showing there. Which is one one round and 
there there you go. You know, it's just that one round that'll catch up to you. And well, that's why it's an elite event, right? Yep. One round can change it all. But of course, Kenny, I'm not going to say die on this. Trying to make up some distance. Does find a 180, but will need, again, a favorable miss or two from Kai, plus another six perfect darts from Kenny. That's really the scenario that we're facing here. 181, let's see how nice Kai sets us up. All the way down to 41. So Kai will have at least three darts for 41, potentially six. Depends on what Kenny has in store for us here. He needs to put some pressure on it, probably find another 180 if I'm being honest. And he might not even get to a finish, he won't get to a finish. So 41, six darts at it for Kai to go to the finals against Leonard Gates, the soldier. And gets it. Kenny puts his darts in his pocket and says, eh, good shots, buddy. Kai got, got hard will be in the finals versus Leonard Gates, and we'll see that matchup next. For the Masters single side, they're playing their king seat right now. Dustin Holtz in the third place spot. That one's going to probably be right after our final. Yeah, exactly. And, unless they call it already, but man. <laughs> Kenny jumps in here. Hold on one second, folks. Hold on. Can't you tell us he's feeling the fatigue, feeling the fatigue for sure. Yeah, he says, I gave that one away. Sorry, fellas. And he said, hey, <laughs> you, you, you did better than we would have done, that's for sure. So, Oh, we had it. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, we would have won it. We would have won it. Yeah, no. well, we already won it. <laughs> All righty, folks. Coming your way next, Leonard Gates, Kai, Godhard, and we will get – that final underway, and then we may get our Masters finals as well, pending on how quickly these matches get called. Two finals for the price of none. Love it. Here we go, folks. William Stewart, Nick Teixeira. We'll be right back.
finals time here in Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, Godhard taking on Leonard Gates in this one. Leonard is your king seat holder. He's going to have to be double dipped in order to lose this final. So keep that in mind. And we may reiterate that as we go forward here for a post-match clip. We'll be playing on the Phoenix here, so we'll get squared away, get our sounds on, and we will get started. Kai not going to be happy with that diddle there, going outside the bull. Gates does get it there. I'm asking where the Spanish players are. We didn't see a lot make it this this the distance here in these in these matchups. And some have been participating in varying amounts. Yeah, some have been taken off and whatnot. But here we go, Leonard Gates. I got hard in your finals of the Elite Singles 01 Division. $2,500 up for grabs. William Stewart, Nick Deshera. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you can see Gates is all business. He's been nonstop hitting the board here you know, uh, ever since before that third place match had even started. Um, just really kind of grinding away, knowing he's going to have to give it his all. I mean, all eyes on Kai so far. He's putting up quite the showing. And Gates knows he does not want this to go the full distance. He wants that money. He wants the check. He wants to go to bed. So the one more sponsored player, what has he got in store for us? Kai's been playing really well, so this could go to a second set. Uh, and so it wouldn't surprise me. That, and funnily enough, that's exactly what Kenny Doyle said when I was I walked out with him as he was heading out here. And you can see Kai does find a good round there. He said, honestly, there's not many people I would say to beat Kenny or to beat uh, Leonard Gates uh, from behind coming from the losers bracket. If there's anybody, Kai is probably that guy. He's just got that determination, and you see, he means business here. Look at it. Look at those eyes right now. I mean, he's determined. Absolutely. You can see Michael in the background that, that was on our stream over earlier supporting uh, the German player. They put him out of the mix. Going to be hoping for a ton here. He's taking out the 141 already on our stream. And he gets a ton 40 instead. And with Gates back at 181, he's going to have to hope for a number and then a miss from Kai. Yeah, he's going to try to put some pressure on it, get himself into a uh, one dart out range. But 101, I mean, Kai is just, he's not really showing too many faults in his game. He's getting in pretty efficiently. He's hitting some bigger outs. He's really just kind of having a good showing on all fronts. You, you normally see a sign of weakness at some point. That's a good shot from Gates to leave 51. I like the bull with the last dart there. 101 to look for Kai. For the one nil advantage, 57-24. 57. Ooh. Well inside. Must have slipped out of his hand or something. That is the first time we've seen a dart miss by that much for him. Yeah, and that was by a country mile for Kai, let's be honest. So 51, 11 for tops, or 19 for 32. He's going to go the tops route. And gets it there, punishing the mistake from Kai. And one leg away is Gates. So here we go, Kai, to start off. You see the hands already out, ready to, <laughs> ready to congratulate him. Here we go, Kai. I feel like because of that area, it's going to actually probably motivate him more in this leg. Only 60. And we say only 60 just because that means that there is room for Leonard to basically attack his throw very aggressively from the get-go here. If Leonard can go first start in and then grab a triple, you'll feel like this is a successful trip to the board, and there you go. How about another, though? I mean, he will find a 160 in. There you go. So Kai has to answer now. He's down 100 points with his own throw. Oh, 
That's going to be an awkward position. He does get one in there. Can he get another? Yeah, it goes low on it. So, squaring it up, and Leonard Gates has now officially taken the darts away from Kai. Oh, he's going to back it up. There's a tip in the board, so. Oh, yeah, that's like a full dart tip in there. The guy's like, oh, huh. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even realize it. <laughs> that was a funny reaction there. There we go. Did you see a little head nod from both players? Kind of didn't even realize it was in there. I just yeah. like the look at the darts, the slow look and the reaction there from him. Let's so hopefully... Hopefully that didn't ice gates there at all. And of he course it didn't. He doesn't mind, yeah. He's he's being in business here. He's thinking twenty five hundred dollars in my back pocket. Yeah, that's a lot of bones. I'd go bet at least a hundred of that on black. And if you place the bet, probably won't hit. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It'll end up on red or triple triple zero. Really screw with me. Kai keeping himself in the mix, but Gates will be the first one to set up on an out here. The question is, how good of an out will he set up for himself? That is the ultimate question. Oh, that's a difficult workaround. Gets big, it to the last. Big last start there. So now 218, how much will that get brought down here? This is where Kai plays best. He usually will hit something big here, put a lot of pressure on the throw and set himself up in pole position. A great last start, yeah, but not as good as up. you would expect from him. Good pick up, but Gates for the win. 101 for LG. Going to get darted double 12 for the match. Gets it done from Leonard Gates. Wow. And you can see a lot of respect there for Kai. Leonard Gates with the big win as he gets the job done. Congratulations to him. We'll grab some pictures real quick of our winners. And then we will uh, this is winner first. There we go. Gates, your champion here for singles 01, the elite division. Now we do have Steve Hilger back in the background there. He is going to be up next as we give you our Masters singles final as well. As uh, Steve Hilger will take on. Let me check here. Who won? Steve Hilger versus Nick West. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's Gates. Give us some dance moves. <laughs> yep. Steve Hilger, Nick West in your Masters Singles 501 Finals next here on USA Darts and the National Darts Association. It's coverage of NDA Team Dart. We'll be right back, folks, with that match. Don't go anywhere. The final matchup of our Sunday night coverage next.
mess it up. Here we go, folks. Your Masters Finals. Steve Hilger takes on, oops. Let's do that one. Takes on Nick West here. Hilger, your king seat holder in this one. Yeah, excited to see how this performs. And excited to see Nick West. Don't know much about the gym. I know he's from that Illinois area, JJ yep. Ventures, but that's pretty much as far as I got. He's a good shot. Has to be if he gotten this far, right? I kind of talked to Eric Gregory, and he thinks what Nick really should have had that match over Steve in the uh, king seats position, but we're getting a rematch of that one. And once again, you, Steve will have to be double dipped here in order to lose this final. So, still close to 500 people joining us for this coverage, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And thank you guys all for your support. These players absolutely appreciate it more than you know. I'm going to pork you could care less. He's going to go eat some food and go to, go to sleep here soon. Oh, <laughs> food. Well, we do have an issue that arose, so we'll have to talk about that here in a minute. Oh? <laughs> okay. I'm fired, that old guys. That's what that issue is. That old monorail closes it, too, so. Oh. Womp, womp, womp. Good thing Uber Eats exists. It's called paying the late night tax out. <laughs> That's what yeah, I was planning from the get-go, brother. Ooh, they do have a... Never mind. We'll talk about it here, man. <laughs> Anyways, Let's get back to this <laughs> I final. see what you're meaning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go full bore on this food talk at the this, wrong time, right? This match. <laughs> oh, Porky's gonna try to get leave a good out from here. He will leave a good out from here. How about that, Steve Hilger, aka Porky, aka finds a 180. Porky for the win in this leg, and he's got some time to do so. Double eight. Oh, too many. Too many. Did bust on that, but as you said, has plenty of time. Can kind of just reset and go from there. So attempt number two here. This seems familiar. Oh, but this time going outside instead of going for the bus and leave himself in better position. <laughs> you can see everyone having a left. They were kind of thinking the same thing back there. That's funny. Funny stuff. Double trouble. Oh, he's not happy with his doubles right now. I can tell you that much. He's still got some time here. I mean. He's had five misses at the double eight. You feel like he has to be due for it on the six. I'll throw in the yellow one first. Bold move, Cotton. Working it in. Oh, oh no. What is going on, Porky? Eight missed stars at the double there. Not going to have a shy here, so he's going to get three more. But you have to imagine now it's becoming now or never. And for confidence reasons, you really need to get this done. Yeah, you really do. Now or never.
<laughs> he says, okay, thank goodness. <laughs> so putting himself on match point, <laughs> even Nick was having a big laugh about it in the background over there. And so everyone you else gave along. me at least two more chances at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I made sure to let him know how I felt about it too. <laughs> you guys, absolutely a did. Really great leg. <laughs> Does get in, but doesn't do too much damage there. So thirty-five, nice pedestrian in. Or he does get in on the first. Looking for a trip. Getting a 36 point advantage there, so eating a little bit away at that going first advantage. Nick's not going to be happy with that round at all. This is where Porky needs to attack. Catching the other side of the dart. And that one kind of got away from him, but again, just slowly taking that lead in his favor. Let's try to sweep this and not mess around with it. What do you got here for us, Porky? Bill Glomsky in the background supporting. Yeah, don't mind the giant man. And he's saying, yep, come on now. It's so nice. Uh, regardless of who you are, having somebody that stays in your corner uh, late into the night, even despite the exhaustion and everything, whether it be virtually or physically, but especially physically. Yep. Oh, Nick there. Not happy with it. Two, five, four. Will we be able to leave it out from here? Good mark. Yes, sir. He'll stay there and gets another 114 to leave. Yeah, good spot to be in. Nick West again. Try to fight back in and make sure he gets his own out here. He's going to kind of feel like he has to. Oh, good stuff here. One more of those. Finding a 180 in there, finally. <laughs> getting, he's kind of he's saying, where was that at? Where was that at? He's and having some fun with it. I mean, <laughs> Someone on. It's like, I knew you could do it. And Porky's laughing. They're having fun. They're having a good time. The pressure has been added. Got to keep it serious here and grab this checkout. Great first start. Oh, 14 for the win. Gets it there, 114 for Steve Hilger, a.k.a. Porky. What a win for Porky. Congrats to Nick West, who takes second place here in the Masters Singles 01 event. But it's all Pork. It's all Porky here as Steve Hilger gets the W. There you go, folks. That's going to do it for us tonight as we will be back bright and early in the morning. We'll be uh, back here at 10 a.m. local time. So we're going to get some much-needed Zs. There's no denying that. And we look forward to bringing you the action bright and early with Team Cricket. That's right, Team Cricket tomorrow. We look forward to that action. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. William Stewart, Nick DeShera, out.